Hello, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff and welcome back, my friends. Have you ever wanted to get your video looking more cinematic? I thought you'd enjoy my tips for doing exactly that and I'll show you how I went from this to this. We're gonna see what we can do whilst filming and then whilst during editing to make things look more cinematic because it's always a combination of things that give you that look. Remember, cinematic is a subjective thing, so I encourage you to contribute your thoughts in the comments section below. My hope is that it'll be a treasure trove of tips down there. In this first shot, I'm using a Canon 16-35 f4 IS, which, don't get me wrong, is a great lens. Super sharp, amazing value, great stabilization. I made a video reviewing the lens and I just loved it. It's linked below if you want to check that out. At this point, you're probably thinking, Harv, why are you using a wide angle lens for portraiture? Well, this is actually shot at 28 millimeters, which is a very familiar focal length for many of us because that is the focal length you'll find on an iPhone camera. It's also a very good quality lens, so I didn't want to skimp on the quality of any of the lenses that I use. This was actually shot in Cine 1, Sony profile, so it probably needs a little bit of tweaking, but I just thought I'd just show you what it looks like straight out of the camera. So the Canon 16-35 f4 is a great lens to start off with, but it's pretty wide and it doesn't really give you much of that cinematic looking background blur. So the first thing I'm going to do is to switch out the lens to one which has a much larger maximum aperture. I chose the Sigma 50mm f1.4 Art prime lens which gives us a slightly longer focal length and a huge maximum aperture for more compression and more out of focus area in the background. I'm not saying you can't get a cinematic look with a background that's in focus, it's just generally considered a bit more cinematic to separate your subject from the background. So we went from this standard looking iPhone-esque style shot and switching to the Sigma we got this which looks instantly much more pleasing. You can see it's sharper, you can see the background is nice and blurred, it's just pretty lovely looking. Next I'm going to switch to a low contrast log filming mode. That way I should have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to manipulating the contrast curves and grading our colour to introduce a cinematic feel. For now I'm going to add a simple log to Rec. 709 lookup table and I'll do a proper grade later. Next I'm going to massively improve the balance of the exposure between our subject and the background by adding some lighting. As you can see, I've positioned our subject so that the sun isn't in her face. We obviously don't want her squinting, that would look just weird. Adding a light just gently brings up the exposure of our subject and lets us decrease the exposure of the background. One thing we want to ensure is that we've used some sort of diffusion, otherwise we'll be right back to her squinting and it'll just look weird again. <laughs> so here's the before and you can see that when we turn the light on we get a really nice glow to her skin and we also get that lovely catch light in, in her eyes which I think just makes such a big difference. It's also at this stage that I gave our subject simple direction of look over there, adjust your hair, look at me, that kind of thing just to give her something to work with. I'm a big fan of movement when I shoot video, whether I'm using a slider, gimbal, or a fluid tripod head, or even just handheld. I always like some sort of movement, uh, and I'm really not fond of that kind of lockdown static shot on the whole. Not to say they don't have their place for interviews, that kind of thing. So I'm going to add some gentle movement using a slider. I've got my Rhino slider on a tripod. Uh, and I'm keeping the, the fluid tripod head loose so that I can give it a little bit of pan and tilt if I want to. Because of this, I'm not using the slider's motorized component, it's just 100% manual. So here's our lockdown shot, and when I introduce some movement, it looks like this. Personally, I love this gentle movement. It looks like it's on some sort of dolly. Obviously, you're limited by the movement you have in one direction because it's a slider. So you just have to bear this in mind when you're planning a shot. Now let's get the footage into our editing software and put the icing on the cake. So you can see my chain of plugins I'm adding. I'm adding a instance of color wheels, then color curves, then a lookup table, then a second lookup table, which I will explain later, and then finally a vignette. 
So looking at the first color wheels instance, I'm going to bring the exposure way down because I've overexposed our clip. I'm pushing our shadows slightly more into the blue and our midtones slightly more into that kind of orangey color. And when I turn it on, you can see this is the effect it has. Obviously, we've still got our lookup table to add to tell our colors what they should be doing. Next, let's look at our color curves. And as you can see, I've added lots of control points and I've very slightly tweaked each one just to make it look as good as I can. It's fairly subtle, but in combination with our lookup table, I was pretty happy with this. And as you can see, I've obviously I've put the mix of this down slightly, just so it's not quite so intense. When I go back to the chain of plugins and turn off what I've done so far, you can see there's quite a big difference already. Next, let's look at look at the lookup table I used, and I chose the Phantom Array Utopia lookup table, and I love it. I just really love what it does to skin tones and bear in mind this is Sony footage so you know you can get really good looking skin tones with Sony cameras as well and you can see with the mix on and off it makes a huge difference to the look. Next I'm adding another lookup table on top but only at 6%. Just the tiniest bit and you can see when I add it full it, it looks horrible, it looks way oversaturated but just at 6% it does I can't even describe what it does, but I just love the way it looks. Finally, I'm adding an instance of vignette, which I love and really just draws your attention to the center of the frame and it just completes the look and I really like it. Obviously I'm using minimal blur around the outside and I've turned the darken effect down quite a lot as well, because I don't want it to be too intense. And when I switch everything off and on, you can see the huge difference from start to finish. The last thing I'm going to do, just to add a little bit of extra cliche cinematic look, is to drop a whole load of light leaks on top. Here you can see it at 100% opacity, which won't work because you won't be able to see what we're doing. And I'm going to dial it all the way back to 0.3% so we can only just see them. That's how subtle I want it to be. For the finishing cinematic touch, I'm going to drop an adjustment layer on the top, which is a free plugin, just Google adjustment layer for Final Final Cut Pro, you'll find it. And in that, I'm going to have the letterbox plugin within Final Cut. And I'm just going to add the 1.85 to 1 ratio, and I'm going to just adjust the offset a little bit so it looks right, and then expand the border size so it's not quite as big a border as a 2.35 to 1, but almost. So let's just sum up. Firstly, I really like to consider the lens that I use, I like a nice wide aperture for that cinematic look. Secondly, I prefer a log shooting mode because that gives me lots more flexibility when it comes to editing. I also can't stress enough just how important your lighting is, so pay special attention to that and really get it right. Also think about the movement in your scene, how does it aid the, the storyline and really what, what feels appropriate. And lastly, I think it's really good to spend a lot of time on your grade and getting that look, that cinematic look that you're looking for. So there you go, that's how I went from this standard looking shot to this cinematic looking shot. Please check the links below, I've got everything linked down there from plugins to gear. And that's it for now, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about video on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this one for you, and my latest release will be just below. If you're not already subscribed, definitely do it. Hit the blob on this side. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better videos. See you guys. My body's holding me.